This is a, a video from my live stream recently. Um, I did two paintings. This is um, a short little video where I did a master study of an Edward Sego canal scene in watercolour. So hit the like and subscribe and uh, have a look at my Facebook group page, Loose Watercolours with Robert Me, um, for the next date of my next live stream. So let's go. Um, it's a book on Edward Sego's paintings. There are watercolours, but there's a lot of oil paintings in here. And yeah, this is a watercolour um, that Sego has done. So, <clears throat> start with the, the drawing. So I've got more sky than water in this scene. So I can start with separating the horizon and the water. I'm pressing fairly hard so you can see it in the video, otherwise you, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, but obviously I wouldn't suggest you press this hard when you come to your own paintings. So this is a, an old canal scene by the looks of it. So it's a black and white photo in the book, so I don't know what colours were used, but in actual fact, I quite enjoy having a go at master studies when they're just black and white because you get a chance to do your your own colours. It's Right there, that put should have been a bit lower down, but not to worry. And that's the, the key with watercolour is don't worry about it. So just gonna give myself an idea where these reflections are. But, uh, ideally should be moved up higher up really, but um, let's just go with it. Maybe we'll <coughs> get away with it and then this structure here so this won't be a very long painting I don't think because there's not a lot in it so the kind of the reflections are mirrored uh, I won't draw this distant uh, buildings in because I'll just paint those in just take again that line out there so we're ready to start painting <coughs> use the bigger brush again let's just mix all the paint up in the palette and see what color that makes a nice warm gray lovely so plenty of paint at the top Clean the brush off because this needs to be light in tone for the uh, distant buildings to show up. And a bit of dry brush, and now I can start to go a little bit darker. And here. I'm just going to lift. A little bit of that out. It's all about tonal value, so I may end up um, just doing this kind of monochrome. So mix another grey. I'll steer it towards blue. So this needs to be very thin, watery paint again, <clears throat> and the paper is dry. So too dark. So again this will dry to pretty much nothing. So these are the distant buildings you can see behind the, uh, the fog. So it's important not to go too dark with this part. And I shall just use clean water to let it uh, fade to nothing down here. And then we've got these chimneys. Another one there. And 
and you don't have to get this exactly as it is in the in the reference I'm sure this landscape changed considerably over the over the years so I can just take a clean brush and just maybe soften some of that just to create a bit more atmosphere and sort of just paint that roof just a slight darker tone than the sky but only just so again now I need to let that dry now we can go slightly darker in tone um, if you've got any questions put them in the comments and uh, I shall try and answer them as I'm going or I shall answer, answer them at the end but, uh, anything art related or anything else that uh, is relevant but, uh, I'm an artist based in France uh, so originally from the UK I have lived in Wales for a few years as well um, but really enjoying being in France it's, uh, I, say I do love to paint outdoors so it uh, gives me uh, you know, the opportunity that the, the summer summers here are pretty good that the weather it's more reliable than I found in the UK to be able to set up easel and uh, not have it blown away so this part is important to retain the bead and I'm never sure what it's actually called it's this well of water that collects at the bottom of your wash that I've got my board at about a 30 degree angle so uh, all the water is running down but not at a crazy pace uh, at a pace that is controllable so as soon as you get these darks in it all starts to make sense but you've got to make sure you reload your brush and keep this wash alive so this is all still wet here so I'm mixing on the paper and then take it off the page So if you don't reload your brush it's difficult to get this bead of water so so why have the bead of water well it's to use to paint the next bit further down so we've got these reflections so the water is obviously very still here because it's pretty much mirrored under there so you make sure you do get them fairly fairly good and what I'm going to do a natural sponge here which is uh, damp um, which I've just wrung the water out of it before I do that I'm just going to mop this up before it becomes an issue and I'm just going to run this sponge across here make sure if you do use your sponge on your paper that you uh, clean it every time you uh, want to reuse it on the paper because you'll end up with a mess so I'm just lifting a little bit of paint out creating that uh, feel of mist on the water and I find a sponge doesn't damage the paper like a brush can. Let's just give it a spray of water. 
much thicker here now. So it's all about getting the, the mixes right. That uh, This is thicker paint than what was here. So I've got to get enough pigment in, particularly on a scene like this where it relies on <coughs> nice clean washes that if it's not dark enough here and I've got to go over it again, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it will just lose that fresh painterly look that we're all going for with watercolours. Again, it's best just not to try and replicate everything you see <coughs> because you lose the freshness that uh, just don't worry about it. So again, reload that brush and I've got the bead of water here. So I can now come down and replicate what's here. That I don't normally paint reflections like this where they're kind of mirrored. That, um, but this scene, I think uh, I can get away with it. And let's bring that up a bit more. And then we've just got a few little lead-ins just to get the eye to move through the painting. Put one there. But I uh, very rarely see um, Seago actually add um, birds and things in his skies. I know some people just really don't doesn't don't like it in paintings, but uh, I suppose we all have our uh, different uh, opinions. So there's just a dark in here, but it was painted wet into wet. And it's good doing these master studies because you can kind of learn the techniques they used. So this will just soften to pretty much nothing. So let's just... I don't need too many because it will just add to the calmness of the scene. He says, keep putting them in. So could say it's finished there really that it doesn't need anything else that um, I'm tempted to just put a bit of a bit of a wash in here let's do it got nothing to lose it's just a just a watercolor painting at the end of the day and it's all about experimenting I think it will just uh, help connect some of these shapes. Let's just pull that out. So let's dry this off. Let's take the tape off and see the final result. So quite a simple scene. Um, again, not a lot of drawing needed, um, but very effective that um, when I turned the page over in the book and saw that scene, I knew you know, instantly I'd like to have a go at, go at that. And um, it all relies on tonal value. That uh, We've got the, the lightest tone against the darkest tone here, which really makes this stand out. And then we've got the sense of depth by having the lightest tone gets slightly darker, slightly darker and then darker again and then by having a slightly darker band at the top and at the very bottom also aids with the, the illusion of depth and it's quite a peaceful scene there's no figures in there that um, you know, if you added some figures in it would you know, change the feel to the scene but you could do that um, but yeah no, I really like that, um, that kind of uh, watercolour thank you everyone who uh, commented and uh, joined in to uh, watch this uh, demonstration that um, take a look at my YouTube channel I've got uh, lots of other videos on there um, all painted kind of in this loose way and also I've got a patron page where a lot of my older videos and some of the newer videos are on there uh, I have an archive section that's got about 80 videos I think on there at the moment uh, and I'll be doing a zoom class um, which if you go to my website uh, which is just 
www.robertmeartists.co.uk and there's plenty of links in my videos uh, you can book for a zoom class there so, uh, take a look at that so again thanks for joining me and um, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe if you haven't done already and uh, I'll see you on the next video so bye for now <laughs>